Do you ponder your death, your mortality? Are you afraid of it? I am a cryonics customer. That's what this little tag around my deck says. It says that if you find me in a medical situation, uh, you should call these people to enable the cryonics transfer. So I am taking a long shot chance at living a much longer life. Can you explain what cryonics is? So when medical science gives up on me in this world, instead of burning me or letting worms eat me, they will freeze me, or at least freeze my head. And there's damage that happens in the process of freezing the head, but once it's frozen, it won't change for a very long time. Chemically, it'll just be completely exactly the same. So future technology might be able to revive me. And in fact, I would be mainly counting on the brain emulation scenario, which doesn't require reviving my entire biological body. It, it means I would be in a computer simulation. And so that's, I think I've got at least a 5% shot at that. And that's immortality. Are you... So, you but I, but like, most likely it won't happen, and therefore I'm sad that, that, that it won't happen. Do you think immortality is something that you would like to have? Well, I mean, just like infinity, I mean, you can't know until forever, which means never, right? So all you can really, you know, the, the better choice is at each moment, do you want to keep going? So I would like at every moment to have the option to keep going. The The interesting thing about human experience is that the, the way you phrase it is exactly right. At every moment, I would like to keep going. But the thing that happens, uh, you know, I'll leave them wanting more of whatever that uh, right that phrase is. The thing that happens is over time, uh, it's possible for certain experiences to become bland, sure. and you become tired of them, and that actually makes life um, really unpleasant. That, sorry, makes that experience really unpleasant, and perhaps you can generalize that that to life itself if you have a long enough horizon. And so, might happen, but might as well wait and find out. But then you are ending on suffering, you know. So, I, in the rare world of brain emulations, I have more options. Oh, you can return yourself. To that is, a, I, I I can make copies of myself, archive copies at various ages. Yes. And at a later age, I could decide that I'd rather replace myself with a new copy from a younger age. So does a brain emulation still operate in the physical space? So can we do, what do you think about like the metaverse and operating in virtual reality? So we can conjure up, not just emulate, not just your own uh, brain and body, but the entirety of the environment. Well, most brain emulations will in fact spend most of their time in virtual reality, but they wouldn't think of it as, Virtual reality, they would just think of it as reality. their usual reality. I mm. mean, the thing to notice, I think, in our world, most of us spend time, most time indoors. <laughs> and indoors, we are surrounded by walls covered with paint and floors covered with tile or rugs. Most of our environment is artificial. <laughs> it's constructed to be convenient for us. It's not the natural world that was there before. A virtual reality is basically just like that. <laughs> it is the, the environment that's comfortable and convenient for you. <laughs> And but if if when it's the the right that environment for you, it's real for you. Just like the room you're in right now, most likely is very real for you. You're not focused on the fact that the paint is hiding the actual studs behind the wall and the actual wires and pipes and everything else. The fact that we're hiding that from you doesn't make it fake or unreal. 